papilloma of the larynx or the so-called recurrent respiratory papillomatosis is a viral disease. Papilloma mostly when they affect the larynx are located only in the larynx but there are some patients who also have papillomatosis in their lungs or in the trachea or in the nose or in the upper respiratory tract. This is a seldom rare disease. It affects about three to five persons per 100,000 inhabitants, which is rare. Where does it come from? Well, it comes from a virus. It's called HPV, human papilloma virus. And it affects people in all ages. So it could be that babies, young children, or even the elderly people can have papillomatosis out of nothing. So papilloma as a viral disease has different subtypes. So the subtypes that are most present in the larynx is type 6 and type 11 compared to other types that are prevalent in the, let's say, genital area. Papilloma is a recurrent disease, which means that even if you treat papilloma, let's say with a laser, then they might and will come back very often. Rarely there is a spontaneous remission, which means that without doing anything, the papilloma go away. Sometimes the papilloma are present in the larynx and stay there and do not grow very much, very progressive. Sometimes papilloma can have a progression rate that is pretty quick, which means that after two months, when you did an operation, they come back and are as big as before the operation, which is a very rapid progression. The typical symptom for papillomatosis, if they affect the vocal folds, is hoarseness. You cannot hear exactly what kind of disease is present, so it could sound like a polyp or something else that you have on your vocal folds. That means that you have to have a look at it. If they affect the vocal folds, papilloma can be present on one vocal fold, on both vocal folds. They can be disseminated all around in the larynx, or it could be that they're only located at one spot. Tiny, carpet-like, or like a little berry, or they can affect multiple regions. There's no prediction which side will be affected and how much. What we can hear as sometimes the first symptom is hoarseness, which means that when a patient comes to our office and says, well, I'm suffering from hoarseness, that you look into the larynx with diagnostic tools like a flexible or rigid endoscope and then you can see oops there is something growing and then you have to do the differential diagnosis. Sometimes the papilloma are not only present in the larynx but also in the airways and that's a threat for all of us of course because when papilloma grow and grow rapidly then it's not only the hoarseness but it's the airway that can be constricted and lead to a breathing problem. What kind of diagnosis do we do? When we suspect papilloma, then the first thing what we want to do is we want to see what is happening inside of the larynx. We can do that with a rigid endoscope that goes transoral and then around the corner you look onto the vocal folds and into the larynx and then if it's a good resolution image then you can see the papilloma. But sometimes when it's a very tiny papilloma you cannot discern is that a papilloma or is that a polyp. But it's very important to find out if it's a papilloma that a papilloma is present and nothing else like let's say a benign polyp. Why? Because sometimes when we see polyps or other kind kind of 
benign lesions, we tend to sometimes say, well, let's wait or do conservative therapy, let's say voice therapy or whatever, just wait and see. But if it's a papilloma, then we would rather want to know it upfront because papilloma, if they're present, they tend to grow. And if something tends to grow and affects the vocal folds, then in most cases we want to take the papilloma out when they're still tiny because then they do not destroy the vocal folds, which means that the voice quality is preserved. Now, how do we look for papilloma? When we go transnasal with a flexible endoscope through the nose, we numb up the nose and then we look without pain all the way down here into the larynx and look quite close if it's a papilloma or if it's something else. Papilloma have a very, let's say, pathognomonic structure, which means that when you look at the papilloma, in most cases, just by looking at it, you can say, this is a papilloma. But still, we want to have a diagnosis by biopsy. If you are interested in how we do that flexible endoscopy, you can look at our um, website and then we have a short video clip how endoscopy works. This works without pain in an awake patient. They come in outpatient. We do the endoscopy and it only takes a couple of minutes and then we know what is present. If we suspect papilloma, we not only go transnasal with a flexible endoscope while everything is numbed up and go very close to the vocal folds, which are about here, but we also use spectral imaging techniques, something like narrowband imaging, which is a special kind of light filter where we can more easily detect the vessels and the structure of the tissues and it facilitates for us visually to do and have a better diagnosis what's happening. We also look for the vibrational patterns of the vocal folds and we do this in the same session with video stroboscopy. We record everything and then we have a thorough understanding of how big the papilloma is, where it is, how much does it affect the voice and the vibrational patterns. In the same session, we can also do a little biopsy and send that to the pathology department and they will look for, is that a papilloma or is it something else? And they can also do the subtyping and look for, mostly is it type six or type 11 or something else. It is very important to do this differential diagnosis because sometimes if you don't have endoscopes that have a high resolution for what you're looking for, you might be fooled by, let's say, just the contour of a small little thing that could be a granuloma or a polyp. So it's very, very important to have a good image and also do the functional diagnostics as I was just talking about, like stroboscopy. In a voice clinic, you also, of course, do the comprehensive voice diagnostics so that we can see how much is the voice affected and what are the outcomes that we can recommend our patients should office surgery be done or something else. It is also very important to know that when small children have hoarseness, sometimes it could also be papillomatosis. Now a small children's larynx is very tiny. And of course, papilloma is not so frequent, but once in a while we see suspected hoarseness, which other people might think, oh, it's the typical nodules. But if we have a close look, then it could be papilloma. Now, do we need a general anesthesia examination? Do we have to put the children asleep always to do the diagnosis? No, if we have very tiny flexible endoscopes and we have one that is two millimeters that fits into 
a baby's nose and without pain can be advanced all the way through the nose with local numbing agent and then we can have a look at the larynx without putting the child to sleep which means no general anesthesia the child has no pain but of course who wants that children don't like that so of course they don't comply with that um, endoscopy but if we can hold the child and then have a short look recorded then probably in 30 seconds we have the diagnosis is it papilloma or not and avoiding general anesthesia